was yet another uh, collapse or explosion. I'm now out of sight. A good Samaritan has taken me in on Duane Street. But at a quarter to 11, there was another collapse or explosion following the 10.30 collapse of the second tower. And a firefighter who rushed by us estimated that 50 stories went down. Um, the street that filled with smoke it was like a fire... Uh, Um, the street okay. filled with smoke it was like a fire, uh, forest fire roaring down a canyon. Now, as I think Patty Sabga and others have told you, all of Manhattan is covered, uh, downtown Manhattan is covered with thick white ash and building material. Uh, the ambulances have been coming now from as far as Long Island. Uh, all the rescue workers are being equipped with gas or face filter masks. And uh, firefighters have been arriving even by pickup truck. And it's very difficult. Uh, Otherwise, the streets are now deserted. Uh, Alan, thank you. Alan Dodds Frank in Manhattan. Streets are now deserted. Uh, Alan, thank you. Alan Dodds Frank in Manhattan. A little more on this plane crash, which is the fourth incident, if you will. There were, uh, there was the plane crash at the Pentagon, crashing into the Pentagon. There were the two planes that hit the World Trade Center here in New York. And we don't know whether this fourth one is related or not, but the report is that a 747 en route from Chicago to New York City crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, about 80 miles to the southeast of Pittsburgh. Trade Center 7 collapsed here in Lower Manhattan. You'll know that that houses OEM, the Office of Emergency Management. The bunker is in there. It collapsed, and as far as we know, everyone had been evacuated from the building a little earlier. Now, let me tell you, when this building went down, there was mass confusion, chaos down here. I looked around, and all I saw was a wall of police officers running for their lives and yelling at everyone and anyone in the way to get out of the way and seek shelter, find cover somewhere. And now, in the aftermath, of it all, thick black smoke, and again, the debris is falling. There's white ash everywhere. We're told that it, of course, contains asbestos. That's why we're all being asked to wear these masks to cover our faces when we're breathing in. I'm going to call in Bill Rosati. He was here when it all happened. He saw it for himself. Bill, if you can just tell us what uh, you saw, what you heard. Well, I was standing like two blocks away, and all of a sudden, I just seen a big flash, and then I seen the building coming down, and I just seen people just running everywhere, chaotic like. Bill Rosati, he was here when it all happened. He saw it for himself. Bill, if you can just tell us what uh, you saw, what you heard. Well, I was standing like two blocks away, and all of a sudden I just seen a big flash, and then I seen the building coming down, and I just seen people just running everywhere, chaotic like. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Possibility that the fire was going to get worse. All of a sudden, a loud, incredibly loud explosion, and we have the video to show you. Now, what happened was the police started screaming. Everyone started screaming. It was a very foul odor. We were covered in smoke, and everyone started running. I started running as well. My photographer Bache Warner did not <laughs> run, and he he was there filming all of the clouds, filming the billowing. Uh, the billowing smoke, and it was uh, it was just incredibly frightening scene. Hundreds of policemen running away from the scene, and uh, and just anyone that was uh, in the area. The ability that the fire was.
Uh, Ashley Banfield is uh, on the phone with us again from Lower Manhattan with more on what is uh, still burning there. Ashley? Brian, I can no longer hear you, but I just want to reiterate for you, if we can zoom in past me, that building right there, the brown building, the tall one, is number seven, World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. In fact, one officer told me they're just waiting for that to come down at this point, that there's no way it's going to be recovered and there's no way that they can stabilize it. The building that is directly South of it is number five, world, excuse me, number six World Trade Center. It apparently, um, in fact, you were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yeah. You've got Carolina here? Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have. Oh my God. Look behind us. Please pan in this way. Please be careful of your baby. This is it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. 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 We're, listen. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. We're okay. I think we're okay. Ashley, I think we're okay. All right. We're going to have to move this way. We're going to have to move. We're going to have to move. That cloud is coming this way. Yeah. Ashley, get out of there. Leave the camera on, man, if, uh, if you uh, need to and get out of there. What we've been fearing all afternoon known as apparently happened, we were watching number seven World Trade, which was part of the ancillary damage of the uh, explosion and collapse of the other two. We've been talking all day about how fast these plumes of smoke move, and you're watching one on the move right now. And they had, would have past and present captains of industry, like Jack Welch from General Electric, CEOs of Southwest Airlines, people like that. So Larry Silverstein uh, was on this show, History's Business, and Larry was the owner of World Trade Center 7, who had taken over the tower complex, Twin Tower complex, in 2001 from the Port Authority in New York, New Jersey. He leased them for 99 years at, at a cost of $115 million a year. So he was on, and this had to be after, in early 2004, because they showed the new Freedom Tower, which is it's built now, they call it the One World Trade Center. And they had had a design competition, and the thing that won the the design that won was a 1,776-foot tall building with the that counted the antenna at the top. And so they showed that design. They talked about 9/11 at the end. The host said, "The Larry, uh, very matter of fact, he says he asked him a question. He says, what happened to seven? And I had been perplexed about it. Larry, very matter of factly said, "Building seven was a controlled demolition," using those words. I wasn't suspicious. It was like a head slap moment for me. I, I, I said, oh, that makes sense. And the, the implication, I think he even talked about, is so, so damaged and for safety reasons, they took it down. And he actually, Larry Silverstein himself, you say, used the words controlled demolition. He, I would swear in a courtroom. That's what he said, yes. Is this the quote where he says that the decision was made to pull it? No, that was on Frontline in September okay. 2002. This had to be 2004. When I saw this, because they showed that new building design, that had to be after December 2003. Well, when he said that, and you know, I said, "Oh, that made sense." I wasn't asking, you know, when would there have been a chance to set the charges or anything. I didn't think about that. I thought they could do it. And in early 2006, I heard about the physics professor from Brigham Young University bringing up issues with molten metal in the rubble of the three collapsed buildings. I didn't know about that. I, you know, when I heard it, I thought, is it a quirky anomaly? I have to read his paper. This is Stephen Jones, is it? Yes, this mm -hmm. is Stephen Jones, the, the physics professor from BYU. And he had written a paper called, Why Indeed Did the World Trade Center Buildings Collapse? So I'm reading the paper, and he's talking about Building 7, which is what caught his attention. And only then did I ask myself, wait a minute, when did they get a chance to set the charges in Building 7? I saw Silverstein say it was a controlled demolition. I hadn't heard anything else. I didn't even know there was a 9-11 truth movement. I said, there's a problem with this. And it started dawning on me. And then I started looking at, I started looking into it and looking at the towers. And you can see explosive jets coming out of the towers, certainly on the corners and on the sides at times. So it all started to look like this was a uh, setup. And that very possibly that those aircraft impacts were nothing but causal ruses to blame outsiders. So... Did it not cross your mind that perhaps Al-Qaeda could have gone in very, very quickly and planted those explosives? Well, yeah, I guess it did. But the, the fact <laughs> of the matter is the authorities in the United States haven't interrogated anybody that had access to the interiors of buildings. I found that out later. I started looking into it. And I said, somebody could have done that. Who did it? I didn't say immediately it was somebody in the United States. But I knew that it wasn't, um, it wasn't because of the aircraft impacts. Certainly Building 7 wasn't. 
and Building 7 uh, was a controlled demolition. And I watched Silverstein say that. And by the way, when I, when I started to realize that there was something wrong, I contacted the History Channel. Every show for years, they would say, if you want this show on DVD or CD or DVD or VHS, you know, just call this number or go to this website. Well, I called them about that show and I asked about it and they told me that series was not available to the public. (laughs) (laughs) You know, the show certainly existed. I saw it. I'm not making this up. I have no reason to make it up. I'm a 58 year old engineer. It doesn't behoove me to do that. So, you know, I looked into it and uh, it turns out that this is not what we've been told, unfortunately. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is is pull it. Everybody left that area. And around 5 o'clock, the search and rescue ended because World Trade Center building number 7, they were anticipating that building was going to collapse. The search and rescue effort of Ground Zero stopped. Everybody left that area. They were anticipating that building was going to collapse. The search and rescue effort of Ground Zero stopped. Everybody left that area. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. And around five o'clock, the search and rescue ended because World Trade Center building number seven, they were anticipating that building was going to collapse. The search Almost collapsed. five o'clock. And at that point, I had saw these three firemen on a little bit of a rise, uh, fumbling with a flag. And it didn't immediately register to me what they were about to do. We thought it was another explosion. It was indeed, according to the Associated Press, another fire explosion. Was either been attacked or exploded. There's been an attack on the other World Trade Center and also an attack on the other World Trade Center and also the Pentagon, near to the Pentagon in Washington, the defense headquarters. Who is, we don't really know much about the other two. There's been an attack on the other World Trade Center and also the Pentagon, near to the Pentagon in Washington, the defense headquarters. Who is responsible? That is still unclear. The Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine have denied being behind the attack. Now of a fourth explosion at the Trade Center. Fourth explosion at the Trade Center. Evacuated out of the immediate area. I mean, clearly fearing that uh, the, the World Trade Center Twin Towers would collapse, and indeed they were proved right. And another building next to the World Trade Center has also collapsed. But uh, uh, I haven't been able to listen to the, the local stations, uh, I'm afraid. The local television stations are running this uh, in very American style as a, as a drama. As a, I, I think they're just going... Well, some New York City officials. Frank, go ahead. That's right. I'm standing here right now just off Broadway by City Hall with Michael Hess, who is the city's corporation counsel. Mr. Hess, you were trapped in, I believe, 7 World Trade Center. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I was. I was up in the emergency management center on the 23rd floor, and when all the power went out in the building, uh, another gentleman and I walked down to the 8th floor where there was an explosion, and we'd been trapped on the 8th floor with smoke, thick smoke, all around us for about an hour and a half. But the New York Fire Department, as terrific as they are, just came and got us out. Uh, space back on chambers in that area. So now they're walking back toward the World Trade Center. And as we keep letting you hear the personal stories, the survivor stories of exactly what happened inside the World Trade Center when that first plane went in, and of course the collapses since then, we're going to bring more of those to you now. Barry Jennings, you're on the eighth floor. You work for the city housing department. Explain to me the moment of impact. Well, me and Mr. Hesch, the Corporation Council, were on the 23rd floor. I told them we got to get, get out of here. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor big explosion, blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hesh, I, I said, this is it, we're dead. We're, we're not gonna make it out of here. I took uh, a fire extinguisher and I bust the window out. That's when this gentleman, this gentleman here heard my cries for help. 
this gentleman right here, and he said, kept saying, stand by, somebody's coming to get you. They, could, they couldn't get to us for an hour because they couldn't find us. You thought that was it? I thought, I thought we were dead. I thought that was it. I, I started praying to Allah, I said, that's it, we're gone. It's well, over. What was it like for you? You were inside there as well. It was pandemonium. I mean, it was something like out of a uh, uh, Bruce Willis Die Hard movie. Uh, he was there and he was crying and there was another gentleman crying and, and for help. We couldn't get to him. We tried to get through the, uh, we, we went through the buildings. We were lost. Both staircases, the, the backside was completely blown away. There was no way to access us. We couldn't get to him. And finally, uh, one, of the, one of the fire department teams found him. But uh, we, didn't think, we didn't think they were going to make it. Well, certainly you got out. Many others didn't, of course. We don't have a number number right now of fatalities or injuries, but I want to translate a story to you that another man Rescue was pushed I asked Rosars to review her video on Facebook with me about the building about to blow up, and I was going to ask about the other people in the video, and I wanted to find out who and how they knew the building was about to blow up. What I got from the CNN producer was a wild pack of lies, misquotes and I did not find out the police officer's name who said move it back. Rosars misquotes the video not once but twice and most likely every time, the first one who says keep an eye on this building was a firefighter. Quotation mark. Full quote was keep an eye on this building because it will be coming down. Rosars CNN, the one who says the whole thing is about to blow up is my photojournalist who could see it through his lens why do you ask? Full quote was the building is about to blow up move it back. Alright guys. Move it back because the building is about to blow up. She is lying about every sentence, and who said what? Why would anyone do this? Clearly the guy who said move it back, the building is about to blow up is not her photojournalist, only police have the right to tell people to move it back. Keep your eye building, it's coming down. The building is about to blow up, move it back. Alright guys, sorry. We are walking back. There's a building about to blow up. No flame. Debris coming down. Yes.
A third building at the World Trade Center complex, weakened by fire and the explosions, collapsed at about 5.45 p.m. Why would Building 7 be weakened by bombs?